Hi everyone, I am Bhavana. I am a student from GRIT College, Hyderabad. And these are my team members, Pavani Gauri and Nalini Devi. We have a guide uh, associate professor, Subhariti sir. And our project title is Deep Learning Based Speaker Recognition System Trained Using CNN. These are our objectives. Our main objective of speaker recognition is speaker verification and identification. Speaker verification is a process of verifying the claimed identity by a speaker. The, the speaker will claim his identity that he is so and so person. So our verification system will uh, verify that the speaker is so and so person. Speaker identification is a process of determining from which of the registered speakers a given utterance comes. So this is our project uh, main task that is the task involved in speaker recognition are speaker verification and identification. Our objective, the, uh, our objective of this project is to increase the accuracy using the effective classifier methods and filtering techniques. So these are the steps involved in speaker recognition system. First, our speaker or the person will um, uh, talk through a microphone and the collected audio sam uh, sample will be filtered and it will undergo an analog to digital conversion and we will get a digital speech. From a digital speech, feature extraction happens. This feature extraction happens. From feature extraction, features will be saved in the form of vectors and those features will be matched through a pattern matching and a classification methods. So uh, if pattern matching will be done through some of the uh, Speaker audio samples will be saved and saved and kept in the form of speaker models. So the extracted feature vectors and from speaker models, it will be compared and it will classify. So finally, our speaker will be identified and verified. These are the steps involved in speaker recognition. So we will undergo through each and every step in detail. So first step is pre-processing. Here, the audio includes the background noise generally. Uh, unvoiced sounds like uh, noises from backgrounds, any noises or unvoices which are not required. So that all, it's uh, our sample uh, will involve all those noises. In pre-processing block, these background noises are eliminated using filters called recursive least square adaptive filter, fa filtering. The sound is segmented into voice and unvoiced sounds. The background noise is usually additive white Gaussian noise. So the, this pre-processing improves efficiency of speaker identification system. One more task performed in pre-processing block is sampling the audio signal at a sampling rate of 8 kilohertz to 16 8 kilohertz or 16 kilohertz. Finally, output of pre-processing block is noise-free audio samples. So to this noise-free audio samples, we are going to do feature extraction. So features need to be extracted from these audio samples. Uh, there are many features in these audio samples. Uh, there are features like perceptual linear, uh, linear prediction uh, features, MFCC features, that is melt frequency, substral coefficient, linear prediction co coding. There are different features in an audio sample. We will be using the MFCC substral coefficient features for our uh, identification of our speaker. The speech features play important role in separation of the speaker from the rest of the audience. So we have different temporal, spectral, and uh, predict perceptual features. So in temporal analysis, the, sp uh, the speech waveform is analyzed, but in spectral analysis, the signal spectrum is analyzed. So here, finally, we are using MFCC features are extracted. We will see that in detail in uh, further slides. And the extracted features will be modeled, model, uh, modeling will be done. Process of creating speaker model from the feature vector, which are extracted from the audio signal. Then after classification will be done. In classification, the obtained features of the class of modeling, uh, according to the audio sample given input data, classification will be done. We will be using CNN classifier in this project. So these are the steps involved in MFCC feature extraction. Uh, it, it calculates the coefficients that are unique to each sample after processing. First, input signal will be given audio signal after pre-processing. Then uh, the signal for, for applying, for getting, obtaining an MFCC spectrum, we will be performing first signal framing. Signal framing, then windowing, then DFT, discrete Fourier transform, ML scale filter will be applied. Then uh, 
After, when we will, uh, then we will apply a DCT that is discrete cosine transform and finally we will obtain an MFCC substrate. So these, uh, this is what happens in M uh, MFCC. First is pre-emphasis. So the audio signal is sent via high pass filter. Then output is uh, obtained. This is the equation through which we can uh, obtain our output. So finally, the pre-emphasis increases performance of the model. So we apply this pre-emphasis. And then framing and windowing. Input signal is divided into frames. Frame size can be 15 milliseconds and 20 milliseconds with overlap of 50% of frame size. So if this is not the case, zero padding is applied to the nearest power of two. Then we will apply windowing to the obtained uh, to the single frame. We will, we will apply some windowing function. We are applying a Hamming window function. So some ending points whenever we will do for framing, some of the discontinuities appear. So to remove those, we are using the Hamming window function. Ending points of the frame in sync. So to keep this in mind, we, we do this for Hamming window in. And then we apply a discrete Fourier transform is applied to the output of framing and windowing block to extract information in terms of frequency domain. This is a DFT equation, discrete Fourier transform equation. And MEL filter bank, uh, the response's magnitude is multiplied with a group of 40 triangular bandpass filter to calculate each triangle bandpass filter's log energy. So these are the equations M is equal to 2595 into uh, log of 1 plus F by 700. And this is to obtain MEL scale. This is the uh, uh, equations to obtain mel scale filter bank. Then we will apply a log. The output of the mel filter bank is a spectrum of the power. The human, you know, but humans are less sensitive to minor energy variations at higher energy level than they are at low energy level. So power spectrum is passed through log block. By applying logarithm to power spectrum, it produces acoustic variation that don't matter for speech recognition. So DCT. Next, we will apply the DCT. It is an orthogonal transformation. This transformation produces the spectrum finally, which is MFCC spectrum from which we are extracting the coefficients. And we are using the filters used for to obtain a higher accuracy, increase accuracy. We have used some filters called LMS filter and Kalman filter. These are the two filters which we have used. Uh, th by which we, we came in to the conclusion that Kalman filter gives a better result and it is more optimal for noise regarding background noises or unvoiced noises. So this is a filter used. And uh, to the MFCC spectrogram, here we have got a spectrogram from this. We are uh, extracting the features using the CNN classification. The CNN is a convolutional neural network, which will, which will extract the features from the obtained MFCC spectrum, and it will classify the uh, features accordingly. So CNNs are used for image classification and recognition based of it because of its high accuracy. Automatically detects the important features without any human supervision. So this is a best uh, classification, CNN. Convolution neural networks can extract informative features from image, eliminating the need of traditional manual image processing methods. So in order to visualize, generally we are using CNN for image classification, but it, what ours is an audio classification, speaker classification. So we are converting the audio sample uh, to a spectrum such that we can visualize, then we will apply our CNN. So CNN involves convolutional layer, pooling layer, Rayleigh function, uh, fully connected layer, and output layer. We'll further go through these steps. Convolution layer, multiplication is performed between an array of input data and two-dimensional array of weights called a filter or kernel. Here, uh, we will apply convolution to the image, visualize the spectrogram. Then by uh, multiplying that uh, spectrogram with an, a mask, or filter, or filter, then we'll obtain some feature map, feature maps. These feature map, for these feature maps, we are going to do pooling. Means there are lots of features. We are uh, we are reducing this dimensionality of the subsequent layers using the pooling layer. We can use, there are different types of pooling, like uh, average pooling, max pooling. We have used the max pooling. 
which will which will uh, take, which will select the maximum elements from the region of the feature map, and uh, then we will apply the ReLU layer. That is, this is an activation function. Uh, the, the the rectified linear unit. Abbreviation of a ReLU is the rectified linear unit. This employs a non-saturation activation function. It is a transform function which activates a node. If the input is above certain quantity, while input is below zero, output is zero. So this is a function you can see, and this is a graph for this ReLU activation function. And then we will obtain a fully connected layer after convolution and max pooling. Fully connected layer. Uh, it is a two D matrix, and we will apply flattening to here to get to obtain a single vector. So the two D the input to the fully connected layer is a flattened vector. And this is the output layer. Here we employ the softmax activation function for classification in the output layer. It does give the probabilities for the each of the uh, class. After passing through the fully counter layers, the final layer uses this softmax activation function, which is used to get the probabilities of the input being in a particular class. So this is the uh, equation for obtaining the probabilities in softmax activation function equation. Finally, we will get an result, uh, results and conclusions of this project are, uh, we got an accuracy of 92.878% and a precision of 92.7%, recall and specificity. These are the evaluation metrics, uh, metrics. they are calculated from the uh, confusion matrix. This is a confusion matrix from here, we have calculated this accuracy, precision, and uh, recall and uh, specificity based upon the true and false positive values. So uh, this is these are the obtained from. We have used a data set uh, from an online uh, that is uh, from Kaggle data set. This which uh, which is sixteen thousand uh, BCM speech samples, and we have trained our model uh, for twenty five epochs and achieved a very promising results. So these are the results and these are the epochs for epochs, particular accuracy and the loss we have obtained. These are the plots for training and validation accuracy. This is the training and validation accuracy plots. And this is the uh, training and validation loss. You can see that we have got around 97% uh, of accuracy, training accuracy and uh, validation accuracy of uh, this much. And we, have, we can see in this graph. And from this, this is a confusion matrix to measure the quality of the statistical or machine learning model. Evaluation matrices are utilized. A model may be assessed using a variety of different metrics. The classification accuracy, precision, confusion matrix, and other metrics are among them. So this is an obtained confusion matrix for our project. We have trained for the trained model. So these are the references used in our project. Thank you.